worry about that right now. Thank you again, Dr. Cooks. Um, thank you for highlighting the artistic interventions and recoveries that artists do to kind of bring to life black, um, black lives and black history. Um, so now we're going to turn to our attention to the ways in which colleges and universities serve as rich storehouses for archival collections. And the next moderator for this uh, discussion will be Dr. Lopez Matthew. Uh, to tell you a little bit about who Dr. Matthews is, Dr. Lopez D. Matthews Jr. earned his bachelor's in history from Copen State University in 2004, a master's degree in public history in 2006, and a PhD in United States history from Howard University in 2009. Currently, he is the manager of the Digital Production Center and Digital Production Librarian for the Howard University Libraries and the Moreland Spingarn Research Center. He is also adjunct professor in the history program at Copen State, um, and he is he has been on the executive council, an executive council member on the board of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, and currently he serves on several uh, boards, including he's a commissioner on the Commission on African American History and Culture. He also serves on the advisory board for the Banneker Douglas Museum in Annapolis and the advisory board for History Makers, the oral history collection in the higher education di division. And he's a member of the board of directors of the Reginald F. Lewis Museum of Maryland African American History and Culture in Baltimore. Uh, please welcome, uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Matthews. having to run across the stage there. Um, our session this after, well, this morning, because it's still morning, <laughs> is on the archival potential of education institutions. And I think that this is a particularly important session because our educational institutions are, or they've kind of been the sort of permanent institutions of our community. They're the ones who've made sure that our history is maintained and our history is still told in, from our perspective. For example, on this campus, we have the Moreland Spingarn Research Center, which has documented African American history since 1914 and has done a great job of maintaining our history and making it accessible to the public. And that's why I enjoy working at the Moreland Spingarn Research Center and doing what I do because we're now starting to digitize the collection, which makes it even more accessible to people around the world. You'd be amazed how many people are interested in black history and want to see what we have and what we've done and what we've contributed. And that's why institutions like the African American Museum are important because they highlight our contributions. And this is how you, know, you can prove and show that black lives matter. And so that's why our institution, our educational institutions are important because they maintain the history, but they also put it in context because you have the writers and the professors and the researchers who are researching our history and producing scholarship and reputable scholarship so that our history can be respected, which is the work started by Carter G. Woodson in 1915. And that's just the tradition that we're continuing. And so. I'm going to introduce our panelists, who I'm not sure where they are, and if they're going to come up to the stage. But uh, so we have Andrea. Okay. So our first panelist, who I believe is not here, is Andrea Jackson, and Andrea Jackson is the head of the Archives Research Center at the Atlanta University Center, Robert W. Woodruff Library. She is an alumna of Spelman College with a BA in history. Uh, she earned an MA in US history and archival management from New York University and was a 2011 participant of the Archives Leadership Institute. Jackson has authored and co-authored five successfully awarded grants between 2012 and 2017, as well as the article, Funding the Future of African American Religion, Archival Collections at the Atlanta University Center's Robert W. Woodruff Library in the Theological Librarianship. Three of the grants facilitated the preservation and digitization of historical photographs and magnetic media material. Our second presenter will be Dr. Pelham McDaniels III. And Dr. McDaniels 
is the curator of African American collections in the Stuart A. Rose Manuscript, Archives, and Rare Book Library at Emory University. Along with a general interest in African American history, his research has focused on representations of black masculinity in history and visual culture. Our third presenter is Stephanie Smith. And Stephanie Smith has served as the archivist at the David C. Driscoll Center since May 2013. As the archivist at the David C. Driscoll Center, Ms. Smith is responsible for ensuring consistency in the processing of all archival collections, pursuing outreach opportunities to make the Driscoll archive more visible to the public, and maintaining and updating the archive's procedural and processing manuals. Her work also focuses on the addition of more collections to the archive, including the upcoming Faith Ringgold Study Room Collection, which will open in May 2017. And our third panelist will be Scott Baker, and Scott Baker has been a part of the Howard University family since his days as a student. He was the first to catalog the permanent collection. As a dedicated art historian, he has contributed to many definitive biographies of notable Howard University luminaries, including Christian Fleetwood, Lewis Crampton, Reverend Jermaine Lugan, and his wife Caroline, Dr. Elaine Locke, Lulu V. Childers, James Wells, Lois Jones, Elizabeth Catlett, and Peter Robinson. He has assembled major showings of the collection for the Sixth College Touring Exhibition to Conserve a Legacy in 1999 and an inside view at the Rockford, Illinois Museum of Art in 2003. Recently, he has collaborated with Dr. Starmanda Bullock on her biography of James A. Porter to be published this year. A proud 19-year veteran of the U.S. Navy, he has served on three aircraft carriers and two frigates, plus Middle East duty in Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Welcome, Melanie, representing Andrea Jackson. Thank you so much to the James A. Porter Colloquium Program Committee uh, and Dr. Melanie Harvey, a dear friend who has agreed to share my presentation with you all. I regret that I'm not able to join you, but I hope that I will be able to attend this very highly regarded colloquium in the future. While a graduate student at NYU, I was a summer intern um, at the Moreland Spingarn Research Center working under the direction of Joellen L. Bashir and Dr. Thomas Battle, truly one of my favorite experiences. Experiences. And even though I'm a proud Spelman woman, I love Howard, and love is in all caps. <laughs> I am pleased to share information today about some of our photographic and art collections found at the AUC of Woodruff Library. The AUC Woodruff Library is a very unique institution serving four historically black colleges and universities of the Atlanta University Center with very, very diverse populations and missions. Clark Atlanta University is a co-ed undergraduate and graduate degree granting institution. Interdenominational Theological Center is a graduate degree granting center consisting of six religious seminaries. Morehouse College is an undergraduate liberal arts school and the only college in the U.S. founded to educate black men. And Spelman College is an undergraduate all-women's liberal arts college. Just a little background about our, our, our Archives Research Center. Our collection was inherited from the Negro Collection at Atlanta University's Trevor Arnett Library. Uh, among our rare book collections are the Library of Pan-Africanist Scholar John Heinrich Clark, as well as a collection of books about black athletes donated by Spike Lee in support of Morehouse College's sports journalism program. We also have many books and catalogs on African-American art donated by Dr. and Mrs. Catherine Daniel. Um, and again, Dr. Daniel was an artist, an arts educator, and the first African-American professor at Bridgewater State University. And they're also the parents of the immediate past president of Spelman College, Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum. We also have archival, hope, archival records for all of our current and historical institutions of the Atlanta University Center with the exception of Morehouse School of Medicine. Spelman College also has formal archives, but we partner with them to often assist with providing access to printed materials. Uh, some of these materials include yearbooks, magazines, student newspapers, and lots of wonderful photographs. 
So listed here, yes, listed here are all of the historical institutions of the Atlanta University Center. And we have holdings of their archives across uh, the board. To the left, you'll see a beautiful undated drawing of the entrance of Morehouse College uh, done by Hale Woodruff, who was credited as founding the art program uh, at, at the Atlanta University Center. So the strengths of our manu manuscript collection truly lie in the civil rights, race, race relations, African American religion, organizations, literature, and black higher education history. However, we collect across disciplines and also have holdings related to the history of African Americans in business, politics, science, and mathematics, just to name a few. We have over 100 manuscript collections, but I've just listed a few here of some of the most heavily utilized uh, resources. Additionally, we have several collections containing visual artworks. Most contain photographs, but we have several more collections of photographs accessible in the archives, and also several are now digitized and available online. On the right, you'll view a political cartoon by, Morris, by Maurice Pennington, Though undated, we believe most of these were completed during the early 1960s. In our promotional materials for our civil rights exhibitions, the image has become a staff favorite. I'll now share with you some of the information about the photographic and art collections in our holding. This is a rich collection of political cartoons that has supplemented our Atlanta student movement and civil rights collection. T. Maurice Pennington was a photographer and a cartoonist in Atlanta. He was part of a group of people, including Judy and Bond, who were early staff members of the African American Atlanta Inquirer newspaper. This newspaper was expressly founded to provide news about the civil rights movement from a perspective of activists and students. The Atlanta Daily World was viewed, viewed as a more conservative um, outlet and often did not cover the student movements. So featured here are three of over 20 original beautiful um, drawings of political cartoons by Pennington. Um, they captured the injustices and inequalities of the times. However, they're absolutely applicable today as you can see. The other cartoons are available online and are seeking to tell a story digital exhibit on the Atlanta student movement and civil rights. And that's available on the AUC's website, and that's www.aucr.edu. On this slide, you'll view engaging photographs taken by an amateur photographer, Bo Richmond from Alabama. We acquired this collection from his grandchildren who found images of Dr. King and contacted us, being the, the AUC library being the custodian for the Morehouse College Martin Luther King Jr. collection. In addition to the King images, this collection contains photographs of many prominent Atlanteans, celebrities, activists such as Coretta Scott King, Jesse Jackson, Jackie and Rachel Robinson, and Jim Brown. Images of Dr. King's funeral procession through the area and around the AUC are also included in this collection. Our County Cullen Harold Jackman Memorial Collection is also very popular and is one of the premier collections we have in documenting the Harlem Renaissance and its key players. Uh, we engage with faculty from around the, the AUC in this collection, and in this collection we have original poems, drafts of writings, photographs, and also pro performance programs. Um, again, within the holdings of this collection, we have a substantial um, amount of Carl Van Vechten photographs, um, and there are mostly portraits like the one seen here of, uh, of literary figures. So we have the collection of the original artwork by Hill Woodruff, which, which consists of drawings of Morehouse College, Atlanta University buildings and grounds. These drawings are undated, but may have been done while he was working at the Atlanta University Center between 1931 and 1946. One of the images, one of the images shown here is called Relics, and is one of the few pieces that actually is not included uh, in the holdings at the AUC, but it's important to know that that image is a part of the series. 
As mentioned earlier, we have photographic collections of all AUC schools with the exception of Spelman College, which has their own archives. The Atlanta University photographs are the most heavily util utilized body of images and appear in many publications and online each year. Many of the photographs are available online in our HBCU Portal Alliance or HBCU Library Alliance Portal and on the Digital Library of Georgia website. The images shown on this slide are from the famous Atlanta University annual exhibitions of paintings, sculptures, and prints by Negro artists. These particular images document the years 1957 to 1960. Hale Woodruff, while a professor at Atlanta University, started these exhibi exhibitions uh, known as the Atlanta Art Annuals. The national jury competitions ran from 1942 to 1970. Woodruff's 1952 mural, Art of the Negro, is still on Clark Atlanta University's campus in their art gallery. The Atlanta University Photographs Collection contains a variety of formats and a series of images. They document buildings, faculty, students, organizations, and visitors to the campus. Some of the image are, images are unidentified, but, doc, but document very, various photographic studios from across the nation. So here, featured here, we have photographs from Columbus, Ohio, Huntsville, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, and also New York City. We also have some stunning images that were on display for W.E.B. E. Du Bois' American Negro exhibit at the 1900 Paris Exposition. We are currently partnering with Dr. Beauchamp Bird at Spelman College and her students in the Curatorial Studies program. Some of them may be here. Um, and they are conducting further research uh, into these photographs in order to identify who the photographers are as well as the sitters. Uh, she's already found some of the prominent Atlanta educators uh, were featured in this collection of photographs. So, in addition to photographs, we also have many artistic posters in our collection. Uh, within our voters education project, um, project organizational records, we have some rich photographs of people registering to vote and being educated on voting in the rural south. Um, and some of those posters uh, can be seen here. More posters are found within the Hoyt W. Fuller collection. I know that you will receive an exciting presentation on Festac 77 by Marilyn Nance, and I'm pleased to share with you that we have some Festac posters in the Fuller collection, among others. Uh, Fuller was heavily involved, involved in the black arts movement, and his collection contains correspondence, writings, uh, photographs documenting the literary and art figures uh, during the 1970s and 80s. Uh, more publications really are surfacing on Fuller, and we're learning more about them, and these collections are getting more use. You can ex how, so how can you access some of our collections at home? We have many digitized collections and exhibitions, some of which are listed here. Briefly to share information about a few of the collections, the Martin Luther King, I mean the Morehouse College, Martin Luther King Jr. collection and the Tupac Amuri Shakur collections are among our most well-known archives. Although the men are very different, uh, neither one's writing and impact uh, on the other cannot be denied. Within our digital commons or our institutional repository, we have many, many scholarly publications, but the space also houses our archival digital collections, such as the Interdenominational Theological Audio, Audio and Photographic Collections, and also Dr. Asa Hilliard's video recordings. Our website, uh, on our website, you can find our digital commons as well. On the top right of this slide are some of the images from our Women Who Changed Atlanta and the World exhibit, which features club women who have the means uh, to serve their community and having a lasting impact on blacks in Atlanta and across the world. At the bottom, you will find um, a image from our Finding A Way, from our Finding A Way digital exhibit. Um, and I will just wrap up as my time is escaping me. So again, I just want to thank you for the time to be able to share uh, what we have at the AUC, and I look forward to answering any questions. Thank you.